This question is a part of the Q51 series. It's a data sufficiency question. It's a word problem. Concepts covered are basically ratio and percentages. The objective of presenting this question is to highlight the fact that whenever you solve a lot of these data sufficiency questions, this is actually a relatively easy question. Whenever you solve these questions, keep track of what is the question all about? What do you have to find out? When will you say the answer is sufficient? Many times you might get an answer, but what might happen is that's not what the question has asked us to find out. Let's have a look at the question. A candy manufacturer desired to decrease the weight of each candy bar while retaining the price. This is a data given to us in the question stem. By how many cents did the per kilogram cost of candy change after the reduction in the weight? Right. What we have to find out is finally what is the price difference or the cost difference per kilogram and this answer should be expressed in cents. Two statements follow. Statement 1, the weight of each piece of candy reduced by 9 grams. He has given you the absolute decrease in weight per candy. And second one, they have given the same information in terms of a percentage. Right? What is said is, the weight of each piece of candy bar reduced by 9 percentage is what it says. We will split solving this question into four steps. Step 1, what we are going to do is, we are going to basically identify what we actually need to find out. We will assign variables. We will find out when the data is sufficient and when it is not sufficient. Right? This is what step 1 for us is. Let's assign variables. I'm going to assign x to be the initial cost per kilogram in cents of the candy. Right? One kilogram of candy before the reduction in weight, let's say, costs x dot x cents. I'm going to assign y to be the cost per kilogram. This is cost per kilogram of the candy once its weight has been reduced. The weight is reduced and the price is maintained constant. Essentially, the cost per kilogram is going to go up. So, this is just for information's sake, y is greater than x. Right? How much of this is valuable, we will come to it later. So, what we actually need to find out is the difference between the two. So, the answer should be, what is y minus x expressed in terms of cents? We should be able to say, it's come down by 0.2 cents, it's come down by 7 cents. Any of these is perfectly okay. When is the data sufficient? In such questions where you are trying to find out a value, the data is sufficient. Note this word when you are able to find a unique value for the value of y minus x. If you are able to get a unique value, data is sufficient. When is it not sufficient? The data is not sufficient either when we are not able to find out what is y, what is x or what is y minus x. Or conversely, if you are not able to get a unique value for y minus x, even then the data is not sufficient. Let's go to step number one, where we'll evaluate statement one alone. Right? When you're evaluating statement one, just look at statement one and not at anything else. In addition to that, what you can actually use is only the data that comes from the question stem. Statement one, the weight of each piece of candy reduced by nine grams. So what has happened is we've reduced the information available is if initially it was 40 grams, it's come down to 31. If initially the weight had been 100 grams, it has come down to 91. So what we have is how much weight did each candy reduce? That is available with us. But do we have the initial cost of one cost per kilogram of the candy, the X? No, that information is not available either in the question stem or through the statement. So do we know X? We do not know X. So one part we do not know. Do we know the new price? We know that the weight of each candy has come down by 9 grams. But because we do not know the initial price, there is no way we can compute what the new price is going to be. So we do not know what y is either. So if we do not know x, if we do not know y, obviously we will not be able to find out what is the value of y minus x. So statement 1 is obviously not sufficient. Statement 1 is not sufficient, you can rule out choices a and b. What we are left with is choices b, c or e. Step 3, what we are going to do is, we are basically going to look at statement 2 alone and see if, able to, if you are able to get an answer to this question. Statement 2, the weight of each piece of candy bar reduced by 9%. So it's come down to 91% of whatever it was initially. Do we know the initial cost? Obviously, no is the answer along with this too. Do we know the new cost? Yes, the weight has come down by 9%. So the new cost is going to be the old cost x divided by 0.91. That's something which I can tell you. But do we know x? We do not know x. So we'll not be able to find y either. So we cannot find x. We cannot find y. As it, go, as it went with statement 1, so it goes with statement 2. y minus x we'll not be able to find. 
so we can rule out statement 2 also statement 2 is not sufficient we were left with choices b c and e now we are going to rule out b also what we are left with is c or e the last step is basically let's combine the information in the two statements see if we can make sense and get a value for y minus x right combining these are the two pieces of information that we have the weight came down by 9 grams the weight came down by 9% what can i deduce from this one thing you can deduce is 9% is equal to 9 grams this is one information which i can deduce so what can i infer from it that the weight of each candy bar was equal to 100 grams if 9% is 9 grams 100% is going to be equal to 100 grams so i know the weight of each candy bar but do i know the initial cost per kilogram no do i know the initial weight of a candy no do i know the new cost no so do i know y minus x no so it's a uniform no 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 we are not getting the answer for this so the statements together are also not sufficient we'll eliminate choice c what we are left with is choice e if you're looking for hard math gmat questions the place to visit is basically www.q-51.com it's a 4g mat initiative if you have any feedback reach us at this email id we have classes for gmat both at chennai and bangalore in india the website details are given alongside best wishes